Hi folks, welcome back. So today we're going to be carrying on our movement towards things that are a little bit more musical. In our last couple of videos we've looked at modules that take various control signals and use those control signals to shape sounds. In the next few videos we're going to be looking at ways to make modules that make those control signals and pass them into our VCAs and our VCFs and those things. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a cool drum pad and we're going to make a circuit that can look at what that drum pad is doing and turn that into a trigger or a gate signal that we're going to use to control other things. Okay, so let's talk about triggers first. So a trigger is some sort of signal that's sent from one synth module to another, usually to trigger, hence the name, some sort of event. So it's essentially a short pulse, a short rectangular waveform, about one to five milliseconds, and we're going to make ours about five volts in potential. And so how we're going to do that today is we're going to build a little DIY drum pad, and then we're going to build a circuit that's going to monitor what's going on at that pad and output a pulse whenever the pad is hit. Okay, so there's, there's tons of ways you could do this. Um, I'm going to show you two ways today. So I built two different types of various levels of janky DIY-ness. This one is made out of perf board um, and some cables. This is made out of cardboard and tin foil. It's actually aluminium foil. We call this tin foil in the UK for some reason. I don't actually know why. So the first way I'm going to show you is with this perf board. So the perf board this is just some non-conductive, hard, plasticky surface coated in copper on the other side. And so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to get two of these, have the copper coating on the inside and sandwich it in like that. And in between these two, we're going to put our core component here. Sometimes when you get electronic components, you get these little, you get them planted in this little conductive foam squares. So you can just buy this stuff. I'll put an Amazon link or something below in the description if you want, but you might have some of this stuff kicking around already. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to sandwich that in between either perf board or as I showed you before, I use the this tin foil as a conductive surface. So essentially we're going to attach two conductors to the conductive surface on the inside. And then what's essentially happening here is the conductive foam is acting like a variable resistor inside. So this will be some resistance. Let's say it's I think these are about 20k. They'll sit there looking like 20k. So if you put this in a voltage divider, it will look like a 20k resistor. And then when you hit it, it compresses the conductive foam, which lowers the resistance. So effectively, what you've got is a variable resistor that we're going to change. And then we're going to build some circuitry that's going to look at that changing resistance and turn that into a nice controlled output pulse. So let me just build one up for you. Using the perf board is probably the better way to go, just because it's a bit more durable. It's quite difficult soldering to this aluminium foil because of, you know, chemistry. So what I ended up having to do to get this to work was solder it on to get the electrical connection and then just sellotape it down to make that mechanical connection a bit more strong. It works just as well, but they're a little bit fragile. So using something like this perf board, I think, is a bit more of a permanent solution, but there's plenty of other materials you could use whatever you have lying around that's conductive on one side. So let's have a go at this. Okay, so I'm just going to use a pair of scissors or you can use maybe a craft knife or a Stanley knife. So you can just score these down the middle with a pair of scissors like this. And then just snap it in half. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we want to get the conductive foam to be the right size for the pad. Just going to cut around it with a craft knife. The next thing we want to do is just solder some wires on. So let's just get some hook up wire. I'm just going to strip the ends with a wire stripper. Okay, so I'm just going to solder these on now. You should really be using a solder sucker. Mine is all the way over there and I can't get it over here. And I'm not moving all my cameras and lights and everything. If you're regularly breathing this stuff in, it's not good. Don't do it. Okay, so there's one. And here's the other side. I'm just going to do the same thing. So you could coat this up in something a bit nicer than just sellotape like I'm going to do. Okay, and then let's just check the resistance again now that I don't have to hold it together. This is at about 40k. And then as I push it down, it goes down to about 10k. Cool. So now we need to build a circuit that can look at these variable resistors, essentially is what we've built here, and measure when we've hit them and turn that into a nice consistent pulse. So this is our drum pad. I've just drawn it as a variable resistor with these brackets just to show you that it's not really a variable resistor. It's our drum pad. And so we're making a voltage divider here. Now what this value is will depend on the resistances of your pad. 
You want this to be around the same resistance as your pad when you're pressing it in. Um, so I think I actually changed mine in the end to be 10K, which is nearer to what my pad's resistance was. So then what that essentially does, initially, if this starts at 50K, um, this will be about one sixth of nine volts, which is about one and a half volts, something like that. As you hit the drum, this resistance will drop and these two resistances will then be in a ratio of about a half. So then this will go up to about four and a half volts and then it will drop back down again. So what we've got here with this kind of low pass filter, it looks like, because we're looking at the time domain, what the signal does over time, we don't call it a low pass filter, we call it a differentiator. And what that basically means in English is that this will only allow the changes in the signal to come through. And so that's why we've got this diode here, because this signal here but will go through this capacitor. And then if this is ground, this signal will become this signal. Something like that. So the positive changes will go through and then the negative changes will go below ground. So this, this diode is here just in case this signal goes negative. We just sync that to ground. Now our op amp circuit, this is a configuration that we've not seen before. This is called a comparator. And what this is doing is using an op amp as a differential amplifier. We're going to go on to talk a lot more about differential amplifiers in a couple of videos time. But essentially what this does is so we've got no feedback. So our golden rules are out the window. They don't apply in this instance. What the comparator does when it's in this configuration is it looks at the voltage on this inverting input. If the voltage on the non-inverting input goes above the voltage on the inverting input, then the output goes all the way high. And if it's not, the output is all the way low. In this case, we're running it off a single supply. So this actually works to our advantage because it means when the non-inverting input is below the inverting input, the output is at ground, which is where we want it. You can run this off a split supply. I'll include the schematics for both configurations in the description. So it's actually quite a straightforward circuit. It's only a couple of components. We've got a variable resistor here. So we've basically got these two are acting like limiting resistors. So this resistor stops us from setting this pin to ground because that would mean that any noise and stuff on this, the output would constantly be flying around all over the place. So that prevents us from going all the way to zero. And this resistor here stops us from putting the threshold so high that it will be really difficult to trigger our drum pad. We only want this threshold to be in a kind of usable range. There's no point having it unusably high. Okay, great. So essentially we've got this sets the sensitivity and then we've got kind of this leg of the um, circuit that looks for changes in this resistance, turns those changes in resistance into a change in voltage that gets pass through this capacitor that goes into this leg goes into the op amp. I've missed out. There should be a resistor here. So I've not set values for these. So the, the values for these will essentially set the length of the pulse. This positive edge, if this were a perfectly straight square wave, this would look like this. And then when it went negative like this, it would look like that. And so these negative going spikes, remember, are what this diode gets rid of. So we won't see those. So the length of this pulse is equal to the value of this capacitor times the value of this resistor. So I'm just going to stick a 0.01 microfarad cap here. And then we know we want this um, pulse, because I said at the start of the video, to be between one and five milliseconds. It's a kind of standard length. So if we look for two and a half milliseconds, if R times C equals the length of this gap, we want this gap to be two and a half milliseconds. That's two and a half milliseconds. So we divide that by this capacitance and that will give us this resistance at 25K. 25K isn't a preferred value, so I'll just stick that at 27K. Cool. So this would output nine volts. If I wanted this at five volts, I'd divide this down. But we're not gonna use it like this because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick a very basic envelope generator on the output of this so that we can use it with some of the circuits that we've already built. Because obviously the circuits we've been building so far, um, we haven't built them to handle this trigger input. So this will just output a spike. It's about you know one to five milliseconds long. And uh, we've not built any of our circuits to accept those types of inputs yet. So we've got a diode on the output here. And then that's just gonna go into a circuit that's gonna look very familiar if you've seen my last few videos. Um, just going to have a capacitor here going down to ground 
Um, and then in parallel with that, a nice big, something like a one meg potentiometer there. And so essentially, when this short pulse goes high, it will dump all of its charge onto this capacitor, and then that will slowly drain off, because it can't go this way because of this diode. It'll slowly drain off through this uh, resistor. And then the output of this is just gonna go, I'll just bring this down here because I'm running out of room. And then I'm just gonna have a very simple uh, transistor buffer. And so yeah, schematics in the description. Let's go back up and have an, a proper look at it. So this is the circuit that we built up. This is that envelope generator on the output. So it's d just a resistor and a capacitor with a transistor buffer on the output. And then I'm feeding it into this kind of drum machine. It's just a couple of drum modules from previous videos. So we've got some 808 drum uh, modules set up. These are set up as toms. This is set up as a kick. And then I've got some metallic percussion and a snare set up over here. So let, why don't we just have a look at how this circuit works in a little bit more detail and use it to play some of these sounds. So this is the kind of output of the pad itself. You see as I hit the pad, the voltage rises up there. That then gets passed through this capacitor. We get a positive going pulse, and that gets sent through to our op amp. Give this a tap, and there we go. So I've got the output of our little buffer coming in to one of these 808 modules. So I've got that set up in a range where it could be like a, a high tom. And then if we go across to another module. I had that with the envelope generator set to just give us a very short pulse. So now if we patch ourselves over to this side, we've got those one transistor VCAs that I'm built up from a previous video. And we've got these XOR metallic percussions as I've showed you in another video. So it's really just a load of stuff that we've already gone over and I'm just using this uh, drum pad to control it. So let me patch that in. Okay, so that's just an example of how you could build yourself up a drum module. And we've gone over a very simple kind of signal conditioner and a very simple envelope generator. So now we've got a kind of slightly more musical way to control sounds and in the next couple of videos we're going to go on and do some more advanced envelope generators and things like that and then eventually we're getting on to full voltage control, voltage controlled oscillators, voltage controlled filters and all of that kind of stuff and then we're really at a point where we can build a synthesizer. Okay so that's going to be it for today folks. If you like this video make sure to like subscribe, share it with your friends. Check me out on Patreon if you haven't already where I've got some bonus videos and extra schematics and things like that. And if not, make sure to tune back in next time and I'll see you then. Bye bye.